is the explanation of energy transfer from potential to kinetic energy and vice versa. Now what is mechanical energy? So what we gotta remember is there's a thing that we stated before is that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. What that means is because it cannot be created nor destroyed, it can only transform. So how does it transform? Well, in this case, we're talking about potential energy. Well, always when it's when an object has potential energy, it will transform itself into kinetic. And kinetic energy can transform back to potential. So how does that work? Well, that works in the sense that you're saying that when an object is stationary with some, with some height, that means it has potential. And then when it starts to move, it has kinetic. So what is the formula for mechanical energy then? Well, the formula for mechanical energy is this. Mechanical energy EM is equal to potential energy plus kinetic energy. But we're very limited in how this equation works. Instead, we could actually say that mechanical energy is the change in potential energy plus the change in kinetic energy. So if I were to write, rewrite this equation out, it's really the potential energy initial plus the kinetic energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. And if I write out all my equation all my equation of potential energy and kinetic energy out, you're gonna see this. You're gonna see that potential energy is mass times gravity times height plus one half mv squared is equal to mass times gravity times height plus one half mv squared. Now you might think about it, what is changing between potential energy initial and potential energy final? Well, it's the height, because the mass doesn't change and the gravity doesn't change, but the height does. So that's why you could say height initial and height final. Well, what's changing in for kinetic energy from initial to final? In this case, it's the velocity. So you have velocity initial and velocity final. So this is actually your equation for kinetic energy written out fully. So we're going to use this equation to help us solve many things. So how does mechanical energy, the equation, work? Well, it's due to the law of conservation of energy, which states that total amount of energy does not change, which means it's constant. For example, if you want to say more clearly, you could say chemical energy in the form of a car, because gasoline has chemical energy. When a car engine combusts, it produces these types of energy, mechanical, sound, light, and heat. But what happens to potential energy when you drop an object? Well, let's think about it. If we write out our mechanical energy equation, so potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. You know that when you first hold on to an object above ground, it's not moving. So there is no kinetic energy initial. And when the object is just about to hit the ground, there's no more height, so there is no more potential energy final. So what you're left with is, when you, when you drop an object from any height, its potential energy initial is equal to kinetic energy final. That is assuming no air resistance. So what does that mean? It means mgh initial is equal to one half 
mv final squared. So as long as you know what the initial height you drop it at, you'll know the velocity that object will hit when it hits the ground. Now if we want to really make it more simpler, you know the masses will both cancel. So gravity times height initial is equal to one half v squared, v final squared. So let's practice this. Bob throws a 0.5 of a kilogram ball at a height of 5 meters. It has a speed of 25 meters per second. What is the total mechanical energy? Now in this case, we're going to use the simple equation, which is EM is equal to potential energy plus kinetic energy, because this is total mechanical energy. We need to find the change in mechanical energy, because this equation is the change in mechanical energy. We just want to find the total. So if you want to make a little note, this right here, this is total. So what that's the case, let's go solve for total mechanical energy. So here you're going to have mass times gravity times height plus one half mv squared. The mass of this ball is 0 0.5, gravity is still 9.81, and the height is 5.00 meters plus one half mass against 0 0.5 and velocity this time is 25 meters and it's squared. So once you punch on your calculator, what you're going to get is, well you get 0 0.5 times 9.81 times 5, you're going to get a total of, and you add this to 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 25 squared you're going to get a total of 180.8 joules. That's how much energy this baseball has. Let's try another example. A crow is flying horizontally at 10 meters per second and carries a rock with a mass of 1.2 kilograms. Calculate the total mechanical energy of the rock when the crow is 50 meters above the ground. So again, mechanical energy total is equal to potential energy plus kinetic energy. Well, what we're going to have is mass times gravity times height plus one half mv squared. So we plug in our values. Our mass is 1.2, gravity is still 9.81, and the height is 50. Plus one half mass is 1.2, the velocity is 10 squared, 10 meters per second. So what you're going to get this time? 1.2 times 9.81 times 50 plus 0 0.5 times 1.2 times 100 because that's 10 squared. And we're going to get a total, this time total mechanical energy of 648.6. So what do you notice about these two examples? Well, what you notice is that when you have a, in this case, a lower height but a faster speed, most of the mechanical energy is coming from this kinetic energy. But when you have a slower speed and a way higher height, you're going to have a lot more mechanical energy coming from the potential energy. So let's do example three. And let's finish up our lesson with example four. Mr. Shield has a mass of 75 kilograms and jumps upwards from the ground to a height of 1.5 meters. What was Mr. Shield's initial velocity? Let's see what we got. So this time we're trying to find the change of mechanical energy, so it's potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. Okay, let's think about what, what we can remove. When I jump off the ground, is there any potential energy? And the answer is actually zero. There's no potential energy initially because I am at a height of zero. A height of zero means that if I multiply my potential energy equation, it has zero potential energy. I will have kinetic energy initial because I will have initial velocity. Now, when I reach the height of 1.5 meters, is there potential energy? And the answer is yes, there is. But when I reach the very top of my jump, if you think about it, if I jumped up, the moment I reached the top of my jump, I would have been stationary. There's no movement before I start dropping downwards again. So at that very top jump, which is 1.5 meters, I have no, oops, I have no uh, kinetic energy. So technically, I'm actually supposed to cancel kinetic energy, not potential energy. 
So this gets canceled. So I'm left with this equation, where I get kinetic energy initial is equal to potential energy final. Let's plug in everything. So I have one half mv initial squared is equal to mass times gravity times height final. Okay, we know the masses again cancel out because it's the same mass. So I'm left with one half vi squared is equal to gravity times height final. Let's isolate for vi. Multiply both sides by 2 initially. So when I do that, I get vi squared is equal to 2 times gravity times height final. And then lastly, squared both sides. When I do that, velocity initial is equal to square root of 2 times gravity times height final. So let's plug this all in. So I got square root of 2 times 9.81 times the height final, which is 1.5 meters. So what is the initial velocity of Mr. Chiel? Well, let's calculate it. 2 times 9.81 times 1.5, and I square root it. The initial velocity of Mr. Chiel is 5.42. 5.42 meters per second. So that's how you find initial velocity by using this uh, change in mechanical energy equation. Let's solve for the last example. Jasmine is skydiving. She has a mass of 50 kilograms and is traveling at 100 meters per second before she deployed her parachute at a height of 2,000 meters. How high does she jump from the plane? Let's calculate it. So let's look at this. We have potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. So what we have here is that we're trying to solve for Jasmine to see what is what was her initial height. So that means there is some initial height. But before she jumped off the plane, was there any kinetic energy? The answer is no. There was no kinetic energy because she just jumped from the plane. There was no downwards kinetic energy. Is there any potential energy final? Yes. Is there any kinetic energy final? Yes. So we are left with just this equation. Potential energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. Let's write it out. MGH initial is equal to MGH final plus one half MV final squared. So I have a plug in my values, this is what I get. You're going to see that my mass also cancels out in each of these cases. So I'm left with just GH initial is equal to GH final plus one half VF squared. So let's plug in some values. 9.81 times the height initial is equal to 9.81 times 2,000 plus one half 100 squared. Divide both sides by 9.81, and I'll get an initial height of what? Well, let's see. My initial height is going to be, well, in this case, 9.81 times 2,000 plus 0 0.5 times 100 squared. Okay, and then divide this by 9.81. And I'm going to get an initial height of 2509.7. So she jumped at a height of two, about 500 meters higher than where she started at. So, as always, make sure you keep yourself safe and healthy, and I'll see you soon.